Hi everyone. In today's lesson, I'll be going through the answers for the non-verbal reasoning practice paper. So let's get started. Section nine, matrices. For each question below, find out which figure on the right best fits into the space shown on the grid. Okay, we have a look what's going on on the grid here. Can you see that first of all, going across, we've got one of each type of inside circle in the columns and the rows. What I mean by this is we've got a white circle dotted black, white circle dotted black. No white circle here, but a dotted and a black. So we're definitely going to want to have a white circle in the middle of this one. Now let's look at the shapes. You can see we've got this is one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so we've got five, a four, and a six in each row. So here we've got a four, we've got a five, here we're going to need a six. So our six sided shape is D, and that's why that's the answer. So what's going on here? Have a look at the bottom. What's happening with the dots? If we join them together, they make a square. So if we join these together, they make a hexagon. And our answer is C. Number two. So what's happened to the top? We can see the shape had a 180 degree turn or a reflection. So the bottom one's going to have the same thing, which means that it's going to be upside down like this. And then if we look at the grid as a whole, we can see that this triangle is moving clockwise. So we need to look for the one where the triangle is moving downwards. And that gives us answer C. In number three, I think you can see we've got a reflection, a reflected line here between these two. So if we do the same here, and we create that figure, this black side is going to need to be on the right. So that's for sure. So we can get rid of this, get rid of this because it's not going to be on the bottom. We can get rid of this. We've got two left over. And then we can see that the white shape is going to be underneath here. And moving in, we need to find this figure reflected on this side. And we can see that that is the same here. So our answer is B. Question four. Let's think about the number of shapes. Here we've got two shapes, three shapes, three shapes. So it looks like we're going up by one. So we'd expect four shapes in here. These were circles and circles. So we'd expect squares and everything here, which is what we've got. We need four of them. There's only three there. One, two, three, four. Could be that one. One, two, because only three there. One, two, no. Okay, so we're down to B or D. And then if we have a look at what happened here, these gray shapes became the center color. So since we've got black here, this should be the center color. And our answer is D. Okay, number five. Okay, how many rows have we got here? We've got four rows. And how many rows have we got here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's doubled. All right, here we've got two rows. So we'd expect four rows. So let's get rid of the ones without four rows. Now we've got one black line here. What could that be to do with? We've also got one vertical line here. Now since we've got two vertical lines here, I think we're looking for two black lines. So for that reason, our answer is A. Question six. So again, like last time, we can see here we've got three different types of shapes, right? We've got this shape, we've got this shape, and we've got this shape in each row and each column. Okay, so what's missing here? We're missing the teardrop here. We're missing this shape, okay? Which is one of these or one of these is missing here. So we need to get rid of the ones that don't have the teardrop. So we're left with these three. And then in terms of the lines inside, we've got a straight line, a squiggly line, and a horizontal line. So here we've got the squiggly, we've got the horizontal, but we haven't got the straight. So that makes me think we're going to want to see. Number seven, a little bit more tricky this one, but you can figure it out. Can you see what's happened here? Look at the way that this circle has become this circle. And this diamond has become this diamond. Let's just check that our method works at the bottom row. This star has become the outside star. Yes. And this 
pentagon has become the inside pentagon. So we have a rule. That means we need this to become the outside shape. So we're going to have the pentagon become the outside shape so we can get rid of the ones without a pentagon on the outside. And it means that we're going to want the star to become the inner shape, which leaves us with answer D. Okay, question eight. First of all, let's see what's happened, the influence the left-hand column has on the middle of the column. That's quite straightforward. We can see this heart has gone to the right, this flower has gone to the right, and this outside shape has, we should therefore go to the right. So we're going to want to have a star on the outside. Okay, what's happened from the right-hand column? Well, this outside, this figure here has gone to the left. Okay, the figure here has gone to the left. The figure here has gone to the left. So we're going to want one with that figure to the left so we can get rid of this one. Now, the question is about colours. I'm going to remove all of these to see if you can spot it. Why we've got no colours in the left or the right columns, but in the centre column, we do have one black. And where has the black come from? It's always come from the shape that had the circle in it. You see? So that's a tricky one. This shape had a circle, it turned black. This shape had a circle, it turned black. So therefore, since this shape has a circle, it should turn black. And that's why our answer to this one is B. Question nine. Let's again look at the shapes. We've got the same shape here, but they're different sizes. So we've got a big, medium, and a small. So this has got big, medium, and small. So if we look here, we're missing a medium for each column and row. So we can get rid of the larges, the bigs, that's what I called them. Now what else is going on with the lines? Can you see as we go across each row, for example, here is the line here, and it's also here as you rotate clockwise, and it's also here. Here there's a line, it's here as you rotate clockwise, and here as you rotate clockwise. So here is the line here, it's here as you rotate clockwise, and it should be here as you rotate clockwise. So that is going to be why we're going to want A as our answer. And the last one, question 10. We've got different types of gears and different colours, so we know how to do this. What's missing here? Black, white, grey, black, white, grey, black we need in here. So we're definitely a black. And what shape do we need? We've got one with smaller amount, medium amount, and a large amount. We're missing the medium amount of spokes here. We're missing the one that has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight spokes. So that, by my calculation, is D. And that is the end of section nine. That concludes today's lesson on our nonverbal reasoning paper. Students can now utilize our entire library of over 150 video lessons and 1,500 exam style questions dedicated towards the 11 plus exam, covering English, maths, verbal reasoning, and nonverbal reasoning.